you have this weird, maybe it's not so weird, you can explain it to us, but I would have never guessed it. You developed this long-term friendship, like true friendship with Prince. Yeah. Uh, wh- where does that come from? So I'm on B. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on B. I'm on BT, and um, on the weekends because BT was in DC. On the weekends, I'm either traveling, making speeches and appearances around the country, or I'm going back home to LA for the weekend, and then back to DC. So I was doing what Tom Joyner had done early in his career. I'm flying back between DC and LA every week. Uh, and so this particular weekend, I'm back home. It's a Saturday morning. Now I've worked all week. My friends know not to call me early on Saturday morning. It's the one time I can sleep in, right? Because I got church on Sunday morning. So Saturday is the only day I can sleep in. My phone rings at, you know, 6.30, 6.45. I look over and see the clock. And I said, this better be good. I answered the phone and the voice says, uh, Tavis Smiley? I said, yes. He said, this is Prince. And I'm like, I don't know who you are, but it's too, it's too early for, this, for, this, for these games, man. Click, hung up on Prince. A few minutes later, uh, Brother Sean, phone rings again. Uh, Brother Tavis, it's, it's, it's Prince. Please don't hang up on me. I said, I don't know who you are. I told you stop playing these games. Click, hung up on Prince the second time. Phone rings the third time. It's Prince. He said, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, please don't hang up on me again. I'm in LA. I'm staying at the Nico Hotel on La Cienega. Do you know it? I said, yes, I do. He says, please call the hotel. Ask for me and they will put your phone call through. At that point, I'm feeling like a complete idiot. Have I literally just hung up on Prince, like that the Prince twice? I call the hotel, Brother Sean. <laughs> I say, hi, my name is Tabby. They say, Mr. Smiley, he's expecting your phone call. Please hold on. They, he already, the, the Spritz board knew I was calling. Now my heart drops to my feet, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord. So sure enough, they put the call through. And Prince answers the phone and I apologize profusely. Like, brother, I did not know it was you. I thought it was a prankster. He said, I know that happens sometimes. He, he kind of chuckled and giggled. Uh, and he said, I'm in LA and I'm wondering if you have some time to meet me for lunch today. I said, if I have time, hmm, let me think. Do <laughs> I have time to have lunch with Prince today? What else is on my schedule today? I said, of course I got time to have lunch with you. <laughs> so I couldn't go back to sleep at this part, right? So I get up, do some stuff, go ha- go meet Prince for lunch. And I thought the lunch was going to be about an hour. Four hours later, Prince and I are still sitting there at the table talking. And that's wow. what began our friendship. What I learned, Brother Sean, years, it took me a while to figure this out. I learned later on, and Prince and I laughed about it a lot. He had decided, he, he watched me every night on BET. As they, again, I'm on radio every morning, TV every night. Everybody's checking out my stuff. Prince is watching me every night. And has already decided in his own mind that he is going to uh, invite himself to come on my show as a guest um, mm. to talk about some stuff that mattered to him, you know, ownership rights, his masters, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so he's already decided he wants to come on the show. So when I go to lunch, I'm thinking that Prince, you know, obviously knows who I am, wants to have lunch just to meet me. What I realized years later, uh, maybe months later, I should say is that Prince was actually pre-interviewing me. Wow. He's trying to figure out if I'm cool enough for him to sit with. What <laughs> kind of cat is this guy really? The guy I see on television, is that really who he is? Can I really converse with this guy? Does he listen? I mean, what kind of dude is he? He wanted to see me in person. I didn't get that in that moment. I'm just thinking Prince is a fan, like I'm a fan of his. He wants to uh-huh. meet. But he was literally pre-interviewing me. And so... A month or so later, I get a phone call from Prince. So this time, I don't hang, I don't hang up on him this time. I know it's Prince. I don't <laughs> hang up on him. And he says, Tavis, I'm going to be in the D.C. area. And if you'd like, I- I'd love to come by your show and sit and chat with you for a bit. I said, if I would like. And <laughs> Prince, had never, Prince had never done BET. And so Bob Johnson, the owner at that time, and all the brass at BET lost their freaking minds that Prince was about to come to D.C. and come on my set for BET tonight and he came and not only did he come he brought Chaka Khan with him so Chaka came with him Woo! so we had a great conversation for an hour that night uh, after the conversation we go back to the hotel he invites me over uh, for dinner at his hotel late dinner we talked that night over dinner for three or four hours until three or four o'clock in the morning and that's how our friendship began and for almost 20 years he and I were dear friends uh, he came on my shows many many times 
Um, I traveled the world with him, just hanging out with him uh, during my vacations. And he was on concert tour. We would talk on the phone all the time. As a matter of fact, some people know that uh, before he died, uh, a, a while before he died, he bequeathed me. I have the guitar that he played at the Super Bowl at halftime. But he's mm. playing Purple Rain on his purple signature guitar. Yep. He gifted that guitar to me. So I actually have that. Oh, and so I, um, I, I treasure it in ways you can't even imagine. Okay, I'm looking at you and the, you're in your uniform, as always, suited yeah. and booted. Suit, button up. When I think of Prince. Yeah. Prince is Prince. <laughs> Prince, Prince, he wear pants with the butt cut out. That's right. <laughs> high heels on. Like Prince is, he, there's nothing <laughs> that I could see that you two have in common. Yeah. Like y'all stayed close friends for 20 plus years. Yeah. What are the commonalities? Like what does, what Tavis outside of radio and talk and prints outside of the studio and making hit records. What do y'all talk about? Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say, you're right. Prince is Prince and I'm me. And you would not want to see me with the with the buttocks and my pants cut out. You would not <laughs> want to see that. And you never will. So <laughs> uh, we are very different. We are very different in that regard. But I think there are some things that we have in common. And I didn't realize, I mean, this I didn't realize this initially. And I feel like you. Why is Prince calling me? And, Correct. And Prince would have to answer this question where he here, he could answer it for you himself. He'd have to answer this question for himself. I can't speak for Prince. I don't know what made him call me per se, but I can tell you the things that we do have in common and had in common uh, for as long as he uh, lived and we were friends. One, I love music. I am a music lover, uh, all kinds of music. My music tastes are eclectic. I don't just love his music. Uh, I love all kinds of music. So one, we are music lovers and we talked a lot about music. I just love music, number one. Uh, number two, uh, Prince is a student. Um, if you listen to his music and you uh, and follow his his uh, spiritual journey, he's a student. He always was a student, and I'm a student. He loves to listen and he loves to learn. I love to listen. I love to learn, and so both of us are students. And so we would love to ha we, we loved having these conversations about everything, literally from A to Z. Um, um, three, if you got to know Prince, he's really a, a, a really great conversationalist. He's shy in public. But he's an amazing conversationalist. Prince can talk for hours. And we did that many, many times on the phone, in person, on airplanes. So he's a conversationalist, as am I. I think he appreciates the fact that I love a good conversation. He loved a good conversation. So we met in the middle on that. Uh, but the fourth thing is that he um, he was a lover of his people. You know, uh, I, say mm. people, I, I say folk all the time, say to folk all the time, I don't regard myself as a leader of my people. But I'm certainly a lover of my people. Prince loved his people. And every year when I would conduct those State of the Black Union symposia, where people would watch C-SPAN all day with me moderating these panels with all these brilliant black minds, every year he would sit and watch that stuff for hours back to back. And he would always call me every year and tell me the two or three people on the panels that he wanted me to bring to his house. So there are a whole really? lot of people, Cornell West, Michael Eric Dyson, Minister Farrakhan, um, um, Dick Gregory, now deceased. There are all kinds of people that Prince called me about who he wanted to meet and connect with and just talk to. And he didn't want anything from them. He just wanted to invite them to his house to sit and have conversation with him because he loved learning. He loved downloading. He loved intellectual, uh, intellectual discourse and, and exchange back and forth. And so I've taken all kinds of people to Prince's house. Uh, I did over the course of his lifetime, but he loved to learn uh, and he loved to listen. And so we had those things uh, in common. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, is it true that Quincy Jones, he tried to get Prince to work with Michael Jackson on um, he did. the song Bad? He did. He did. That's a real story? It's a true story. So the short, the short version very quickly is, and Quincy and I laugh about this all the time, and Q is a good friend of mine, so I'm not saying anything that he hasn't told me and I think it's probably out there in certain places. You gotta, it, you gotta, you gotta fight to find it. Uh, but um, again, Q has told me this to my face. We laughed about it any number of times. So when Michael was doing the bad album, um, um, he um, he and Michael talked about uh, getting uh, Prince and Michael together at least for for one song. Uh, and so Quincy invited Michael and Prince to his house one night to get together to talk about doing this song together. Uh, and 
uh, the phone rings and it's Michael on the phone and Michael says to Q, uh, uh, Quincy, is, uh, is Prince there yet? And uh, uh, Q says, uh, no, Michael, he's not here yet. Okay, Michael hangs up. Phone rings three minutes later. It's Prince. Uh, Prince says, uh, Q, it's, uh, it's Prince. Is Michael there yet? And uh, he says, no, Michael ain't here yet. Prince hangs up. I'm not making this up. This happens for minutes. It goes on for minutes. Michael's calling, seeing if Prince is there first. Prince is calling, <laughs> seeing if Michael is there first. Nobody wants to sit and wait on the other. And both of them in their limousines driving past each other in the neighborhood. But nobody wants to be the first one waiting on the other. And finally, Michael, uh, uh, Q says to Michael, Michael, stop this, man. Come to the house. Let's get this conversation started. So Michael pulls up. And then two seconds later, here comes Prince. And they're going to have dinner. And before dinner, uh, Prince says, before we sit for dinner, I just want to ask a question. I got the lyric sheet. I want to ask a question. And Prince points to the lyric sheet and says, whose line right here is this? Who, whose line is this? And the line he points to is the line in the Michael track that says, your bud is mine. <laughs> Prince wants to know whose line is this in the song? And Q and Michael look at each other and Q says, uh, that's Michael's line. And Prince said, okay, thank you very much. The nigga walked out the house and that was it. It never happened. Stop. Get out of here. Never, that's what happened. If you don't believe that story, ask Quincy Jones. But Q will tell you that's what happened. Prince was not going to do a song with Michael where Michael was going to say to him, your bud is mine. <laughs> not not going to happen, man. Not going to happen. True story. <laughs>